pulling me to this. Uh, yeah. Uh, could some recall start a recording for the backup? Okay. Uh, I think I pressed it. Yeah. So uh, the 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 talk today is uh, uh, by Sam Chef Tadano from the University of the Ryukyu, Japan, and the title is the LGM AMOC across PME phases and the role of NADW uh, slash AABW density contrast. Uh, can you share the screen and please start? Okay. Um, yeah. Is it big enough? Yes. Good. Pretty good. Oh, one moment, please. Sorry, I need to bring my spotlight. And can you see my like red spotlight? Okay. Yes. Okay, uh, please start. Okay. Um, uh, thanks. Uh, uh, hi, everyone. I'm Sam Sheriff Tarano from uh, Japan. And I'm very happy to have this opportunity to share our work. Um, today, uh, we're going to talk about the LGM AMOC across different PMIT phases and the role of NADW ABW density contrast. And this is a uh, work co led by me and Malena in Germany. And we also like to thank all the co authors for providing the data and for insightful discussion. Okay. So the AMOC is a, a very important component of the climate system, and it is considered to uh, respond to a different climate state. And understanding the dynamics of the uh, AMOC changes to the modification of uh, background climate is uh, very important to interpret the cause of the past climate changes, as well as to improve the projections of the future AMOC. And in doing this, uh, we think there are uh, quite a few ways. One is to like increase the number of observation of a modern AMOC. But uh, uh, thinking about the long time scale of the oceanic circulation like the AMOC, it's always good to go back to the past uh, to see how uh, that was, uh, how the AMOC was, uh, to learn how the AMOC responded to climate change. In this regard, uh, the last glacier maximum is a, a nice candidate. And figure on the left uh, shows a reconstruction of LGM ice elevation from Lev's work. And you may see a thick ice uh, sitting over to North America and over to Northern Europe. And uh, the atmospheric CO2 level was quite low. And as a result, uh, the climate of the LGM is considered to be uh, very colder than today. Due to these uh, large differences in the climate state, the LGM is set as the target period in the IPCC to better understand the climate system and to test their climate models used for future uh, projections of uh, climate and AMOC. So uh, thanks to all the effort uh, done by the proxy side, uh, we now have a good understanding how the AMOC was around the LGM. And here too, it plots uh, compares the uh, schematic state of the AMOC for the modern on the left and LGM on the right. And it shows a, a latitudinal vertical cross section at the Atlantic Basin. So for the modern climate, uh, we have a strong northward flow, which uh, reaches the high latitude up over the uh, northern North Atlantic, gets a uh, cold, uh, it gets cooled by the uh, atmosphere, sinks and returns south. And this is called the AMOC or the NADW cell. cell. Beneath the AMOC, you can see uh, some a bit, uh, intrusion of the Antarctic bottom water from the south. And um, yeah, yeah. And for the uh, LGM, uh, according to reconstruction, uh, you may see uh, that the uh, bottom ocean of the Atlantic is uh, filled with the ABW, more, intru more northward intrusion of the ABW, causing a shoaling of the AMOC at the LGM. Uh, in terms of the strength of the uh, LGM AMOC, there's still some debate on it, but it seems uh, it's probably, uh, it's considered that probably the LGM AMOC was weaker 
compared to modern. And also some uh, studies have suggested that the sinking region of the AMOC or the NADW formation region has shifted southward at the LGM. Okay. So knowing that um, LGM AMOC state was like this, uh, quite a few uh, modeling studies have been trying to reproduce, to reproduce the AMOC at the LGM. As far as I know, uh, the very first study that tried to simulate the LGM AMOC in a climate model was uh, done by uh, Konopolsky and others in 1998 using uh, uh, EMIC. And these two figures compare the simulated AMOC state for the modern and for the LGM on the right. So the model does reproduce the strong sinking and deep sinking of the NADW cell in the modern climate. However, it also managed to reproduce the northward intrusion of the Antarctic bottom water and shelling of the AMOC at the LGM. And also the model reproduced uh, the southward shift of the NADW formation region or the sinking point of the AMOC. So about 26 years ago, maybe, yeah, um, the situation was uh, much simpler. The model was reproducing the LGM AMOC, and I think everyone was happy, probably, I don't know. But uh, yeah, uh, it was more straightforward, I guess. The situation got a bit more complicated when we started to see some outputs from PMIP2 and PMIP3. So these two panels uh, show uh, the simulated AMOC for PI and LGM for the PMIP2 and PI and LGM and the differences between the LGM and PI for the EPMIP3. Well, you may first see like, uh, you may first see uh, the simulated AMOC responses can be model dependent, especially for the PMIP3, uh, PMIP2. Uh, you may also notice that most of the simulations in PMIP2 and PMIP3 tend to uh, uh, show a stronger and deeper AMOC at the LGM, which contradicts the uh, reconstruction. So the ultimate question of this study is to understand why most models are simulating deeper and stronger AMOC at the LGM. And also another question is, what's the cause of the diversity in the simulated LGM AMOC. Since the work uh, in PMIP2 and PMIP3, quite a few modeling studies have been exploring how the LGM AMOC or the, in general, glacial AMOC are affected by different uh, climate forcings. And it has been shown that the northern forcing and the southern forcing uh, are, are quite important in this regard. So for the northern forcing, uh, the existence of the North American ice sheet uh, are likely to be very important because it intensifies the surface wind over the northern North Atlantic, which increases the strength of the uh, wind-driven oceanic circulation and also the northward transport of salt by the wind-driven oceanic circulation, making the high latitude and NADW saltier, which induces a deeper AMOC at the LGM. Another important forcing is uh, over, the sea, uh, over the Southern Ocean. And in this area, the colder climate induced by the lower CO2 uh, causes an uh, increase in the uh, sea ice formation, which will uh, induce more brine rejection, making the ABW saltier and uh, as a result, uh, shows the aim of the LGM. So it seems like the balance between the northern forcing and the southern forcing, or the balance between the NADW and the ABW, uh, are the key to uh, reproduce the LGM aim of green climate models. And this is, in fact, uh, uh, suggested uh, by Viva in two thousand seven using outputs from PMIP2 and PMIP1.5 models. So in their uh, paper, they compared the changes in the AMOC strength to changes in the ABW and ADW density contrast. 
So here the x-axis corresponds to the uh, changes in the density contrast and the y-axis the MX strength changes. Okay. For models simulating a larger increase in density of uh, ABW compared to NADW at the LGM, they tend to uh, simulate a weaker AMOC at the LGM, whereas uh, for models uh, simulating a heavier, uh, no, larger increase in NADW density compared to ABW at the LGM, they tend to uh, simulate a stronger AMOC. The objective of this uh, paper or, or this work is to revisit uh, the, uh, the VIVIS work by including more model outputs from PMIP3 and from the latest PMIP4 models. And in addition to this, we also uh, conducted analysis on the NADW formation region, also surface wind fields and the Southern Ocean temperature to see how the variations in those patterns might affect the, uh, might induce the diversity in the LGM, assimilated LGM AMOC. Okay. So the data we use, uh, we've been using is uh, from PMIT 234. And in this presentation, we're gonna present results from 20 different models, but we also have some uh, model outputs from CESM 1.2 and CESM 2.1. But these are not included in this presentation because we got it recently, uh, not because I was lazy, hopefully, yummy. Anyway. Uh, in addition to the AMOC and oceanic density, uh, we also analyze the surface air temperature and the surface wind stress field, field for, for most of the climate models analyzed in this study. Okay, so now I'd like to move on to the result. So here first shows the uh, responses of the LGM AMOC depth and the strength in 20 different models. For the top panel, it shows the changes in the ABW thickness. So the positive value means shallower AMOC at the LGM. And for the bottom panel, uh, the negative value means uh, a weaker AMOC at the LGM. Uh, based on this figure, we find that uh, 13 models uh, simulate a, a deeper AMOC at the LGM whereas three models uh, reproduces the shallower AMOC suggested by the proxies. And four uh, models simulate very small changes. And these results are basically consistent with previous studies like uh, Viva, uh, Mukli and Schmitner and Kagiyama 2021. Okay. So uh, next we checked how the simulated NADW formation region differ depending on the simulated a LGM AMOC state. So what we did here is we sorted the NADW formation region based on the types of the LGM AMOC. So the top panel summarizes the result of the NADW formation region for the models simulating deep LGM AMOC. So it contains uh, uh, results from 13 different models. The uh, middle one is the small change models and the bottom one are the uh, shallow LGM AMOC models. And the color in each figure represents the numbers of models simulating mixed layer depths beyond 600 meters in February. So one thing we first found is that regardless of the uh, simulated LGM AMOC type, most models uh, simulate a secession or weakening of the NADW formation in the gene C. Uh, which are simulated in the uh, in the pre-industrial pre climate, but these are not seen for their LGM simulations. This means that just reducing the deep water formation in the gene C is not enough to uh, simulate the shelling of the LGM AMOC. However, we also see some differences between the deep models and the shallow models in terms of an ADW formation of the LGM. For the deep models, uh, it looks like uh, most models uh, are simulating uh, NAD level formation region in most areas uh, over the support region, including the eastern part. Whereas for the shallow LGM models, the model only simulates deep uh, water formation at the western part. So this might have an important implication, maybe. Not quite sure yet, but yeah. Possibly. 
Okay. So um, then we explored uh, uh, the relation of the changes in the LGMM of depth and the ABW uh, NADW density contrast using PMIP2, 3, and 4 model outputs. So this is a, a new figure, uh, which is based on, uh, based on the VIVIS paper. So the X-ax corresponds to the density contrast, Y-ax corresponds to the uh, LGM AMOC depth change. And uh, we find that for models uh, simulating a larger increase in the ABW at the LGM compared to the NADW, they tend to simulate a shelling of the LGM AMOC. Whereas for models simulating a larger increase in the NADW density compared to the ABW, they tend to simulate a deepening of the LGM AMOC. So simulating the uh, larger increase in the ABW at the LGM is uh, the key to reproduce the shelling of the LGM AMOC. And uh, this result itself was already mentioned in Beaver's paper, but uh, we confirmed it uh, by including more outputs from PMIP3 and PMIP4. Another important thing is we see a large correlation between these two variables, which might imply that uh, the uh, diversity in the simulated LGM AMO can be explained by the simulate diversity in the simulated changes of the NADW ABW contrast. Okay. So, how can we get a denser ABW at the LGM? To further explore this, we conducted TS diagram analysis on a NADW and ABW for PMIP2 models, PMIP3, and PMIP4 models. So the x-ax corresponds to salinity, y-ax corresponds to temperature, and the field symbols are those for NADW, and the open ones are for the ABW. Okay. Um, based on the result, we see that uh, for models uh, simulating the shelling of the LGM AMOC, all of them uh, simulate a saltier uh, ABW than the NADW. However, for models simulating a deep, deeper LGM AMOC, uh, they still tend to simulate saltier NADW compared to the ABW. So uh, getting the right balance of the salinity between the NADW and the ABW seems to be the key to reproduce the shelling of the LGM AMOC. Okay, so how can we do that? Um, to understand this, uh, here we uh, compared the relation of the northern forcing, which is the LGM wind stress curl on the y-axis, and the uh, southern ocean forcing, which is the LGM uh, southern ocean aerial average uh, surface uh, air temperature. This is the actual value, not the anomaly, uh, and the uh, changes in the LGM aim of depth, and the red color means uh, shelling. Based on this figure, uh, we, I don't know, um, we see that uh, all the models could be categorized into three groups. The first group is the models simulating the shelling of the LGM AMOC. In these models, uh, they simulate very cold LGM uh, Southern Ocean, and also intermediate to strong surface winds up the North Atlantic. On the other hand, for most models simulating a deep LGM AMOC, they have an intermediate uh, LGM uh, Southern Ocean temperature and intermediate uh, wind stress forcing in the north. So by, com by comparing these two the groups, you may think that for these models, one way to simulate the shelling of the LGM AMOC is to just get the Southern Ocean colder. There's also another option, uh, which is related to the, to the third group. So this is the model which has a, a intermediate uh, LGM Southern Ocean temperature, but very weak North American wind, uh, North Atlantic wind. So another way to get the shelling of the LGM AMOC is to weaken the Southern uh, surface winds over the North Atlantic, which will reduce the salinity of the NADW. Um, uh, yeah change the balance of the NADW, ABW salinity. Okay. okay, 
So I'd like to move on to the discussion. So now we understand, okay, getting the right balance of the Southern Ocean and the North Atlantic is important. And uh, how do we, how we do that? Um, I think it can depend, depend on each model, but one common thing that all the model has, uh, at least the PMIP 2, 3, and some of the PMIP model, PMIP 4 model has, is the warm Southern Ocean temperature bias in the modern climate. And yeah, because the model has a warm condition already in the PI situation, maybe it's difficult to get a very cold Southern Ocean at the LGM. So fixing this bias by changing some of the cloud scheme, sea ice uh, transport scheme, or by changing the strength of the coupling among atmosphere, sea ice, ocean over this region might be important. Another thing that can be important is to try to improve the representation of the vertical downwards transport of salt related to the formation of the ABW. And this has been a difficult process to resolve in the climate model because of the e-course resolution of the model. And I know some of the studies uh, have been trying to implement like a, a parameterization to uh, incorporate these effects, but uh, doing that kind of thing can help as well. There are also other uncertainties which can affect, uh, which is related to the shape of the North American ice sheet, which can affect the strength of the surface wind over the North Atlantic, as well as, well as the, the direction of the river routing, which can affect the freshwater budget over the Arctic region and also the, over the Northern North Atlantic. Uh, the meltwater flux from the ice sheets up the LGM. This is an interesting topic because in the LGM PMIP runs, we don't specify it. But in the deglaciation MIP, people specify it. So it's kind of thing maybe we can debate for the future. But uh, obviously, if you have more the positive freshwater input at the LGM, that will make most models easier to reproduce the shelling of the AMOC. Ocean mixing has been important always, and there's also some interesting debate around it, but not a discussion around it. So uh, please read these papers and also the other uh, similar papers, which is not listed here, but um, I didn't, no offense. Uh, definition of the AMOC, that's another interesting thing. And um, there's a nice discussion on it in Uwe's uh, recent Climate of the Past discussion uh, manuscripts, so if you haven't read it yet, uh, it might be worth to read it. Yeah, I think I'm running out of time, so I'm going to move on. And um, to summarize, so we analyzed uh, the PMIP2, 3, 4 LGMA MOX uh, outputs and found that the southward shift of the NADW formation region alone cannot cause a shallower LGMA MOX, but DM deep AMOC models simulate larger areas of deep water formation over the subpolar region, including the eastern part. Changes in the NADW ADW contrast are the dominant driver of changes in the AMOC, and most models simulate larger increase in NADW density, hence causing a deeper LGM AMOC. Simulating colder Southern Ocean at the LGM may be the key in reproducing the shallow LGM AMOC, and doing this can be a model dependent, but it will be an interesting thing to uh, try. Okay, and uh, last but not least, uh, we're trying to write up a paper uh, and we're still looking for some data that can be included. It doesn't have to be a proper LGM uh, PMIP run. It could be from one of the deglaciation runs. And if you're interested, all we need is a 100 year or longer means of AMOC surface air temperature, wind, three dimensional, uh, three dimensional oceanic temperature and salinity to calculate the density field. Okay, um, that's it for me and thanks for your time. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Sam, it was good. Um, so we uh, would like to invite questions from the audience. Yes, uh, Matteo, really? <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, thanks. Thanks, Sam, for the very nice overview. 
Uh, actually, if I saw it right in one of the first figures that you showed, uh, it seems that it's the community climate system model family that is showing yeah, 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 yeah. mostly. And yeah, this this AMOC weakening and shallowing of the LGM. And do you have any idea what this particular family of models is doing differently compared to others? Or, or um, do you think like it's the tree of them? And yeah, so that's a good point. So all of, most of all of the models reproducing the shelling of the LGM AMOC with the uh, uh, current difference. I mean, uh, with I mean, AMOC are the uh, CCSM family, and for the CCSM three and four, uh, they have a cold uh, sea surface temperature bias over the Southern Ocean in the pre-industrial. So they already start from a cold Southern Ocean in the PI, and that might help to get a colder LGM at the, a colder Southern Ocean at the LGM. However, for the season one, they have a positive uh, Southern Ocean SST bias. So they start from a warmer PI. But the thing about the season is they have a climate sense, large climate sensitivity, and they also have a larger uh, LGM cooling, global cooling. And that's bringing the warm PI to the very cold LGM Southern Ocean. So it's probably the combination of the um, the bias in the Southern Ocean climate sensitivity. But um, there's also a paper by Jianzu on the um, Southern Ocean temperature in the season model. And it came out in 2021 in climate the past. Oh, sorry, it's taking time. So this one. And it discusses, so the paper discusses the role of the uh, oceanic heat transport, sea ice extent, and the atmosphere a coupling around the Southern Ocean. And I don't know why, but in the season model, it appears that they have a very strong coupling, strong positive feedback. So once the sea ice starts to expand, it, it doesn't stop until it reaches like very extensive area, if that makes sense. Thanks. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a combination of quite a few processes, I guess. But so basically, they get it right, right for the wrong reason. Is that yeah? Quite... Um, <laughs> it, they get it right with different kind of reasons. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. Thanks for your question. Yeah. Good. Um, is there other questions? There's one from Tim in the chat, if you might be able to answer that, Sam. Is there any dependence on uncertainties in LGM bathymetry? Ooh, mm -hmm. this is an interesting one. Um, when you say, okay, when you say bathymetry, does it also include like the land sea mask or? Because maybe uh, um, one thing that, can affect is so some of the models are not really high resolution models. And in those like coarse resolution climate models, just changing like one grid of ocean to land at the LGM can mean like a very drastic, uh, I mean, can mean a drastic changes in the uh, freshwater transport around the Denmark Strait or other strait. So that can also be important, I guess. Um, did I answer a question? But or maybe um, do you mean by like the Labrador or like Buffin Bay area? We're not quite sure the land sea mask around that region due to the the uncertainties in the ice shelf extent or something like that. That can also be interesting, yeah. Maybe. Okay. Um, there are questions. I have one actually. Um, this this slide you you uh, oh. I can see a, a big bias in North Atlantic, and you did mention about the mm. uh, temperature thermal influence on the northern. Hemisphere. You only talked about wind stress. I'm wondering if there is an influence from the thermal uh, component 
on the northern uh, North Atlantic uh, regions. Yeah, yeah um, haven't analyzed that yet, but uh, that can be that can also be important. So when, when you have like a colder southern, oh, which I don't know, but we can just oh, sorry for that. Um, so one thing that can happen is when you have very cold uh, North Atlantic or Arctic up the LGM, that will cause more sea ice formation. And that might, I mean, and all the new ice formed in the Arctic could be transported to the nor northern North Atlantic, which is the deep water formation region and weaken the the deep water formation and the AMOC. So, yeah, it does have a potential, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure how important that can be because I haven't done the analysis yet. Okay. Um, thank you. Other questions? Have you checked the uh, salinity bias? Uh, I think we did it once a while ago and yeah. completely forgot about it. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe yeah. salinity bias in the deep ocean can be important, I guess, maybe. Yeah. Oh, Frack, Fred, no, Frederick. How confident are people about the AMOC proxy? Um, I'm not sure if I'm the right person to answer this question. <laughs> um, uh, proxy people are doing their best, I guess. Uh, but, um, yeah, obviously, sometimes it's difficult to uh, infer the all the information of the AMOC from like a couple of proxy points because uh, from modern observation and some of the modeling results, we know the heterogeneity in the AMOC. Um, I think Laurie Menville has once discussed uh, looking the proxy on the western side of the Atlantic Basin or the eastern side of the Atlantic Basin can end up end up in a different interpretation of the LGM AMOC. So yeah, there's always some uncertainties in it. And I think that's why quite a few people are trying to incorporate like uh, carbon cycle or like neodymium uh, cycle uh, modeling in the ocean component to do like a, a apple to apple um, uh, comparison. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, hopefully I answered to the question, but yeah. There, there, there is a discussion on it, yeah. Okay, so um, I think I will stop uh, once and then hand over to Chris and then we can go back to uh, more discussions if people want to do that. Chris, please. Yeah, that's... So I guess the... What, oh, I have just sent you an email. It, it should be arriving in an inbox about now. Uh, the There's a process in within CMIP. I guess, actually, I need to step back a bit. CMIP is slowly chuntering along, doing it, what it needs to do to be able to try and get the simulations coordinated. Uh, the... The... CMIP isn't endorsing experiments like it used to. So we are, uh, so we don't need to come up with an experiment and advertise it, apart from for this process, for this a particular small subset of experiments, which are called the fast track. And, and there's an expanded deck as well. So the, so there is a PMIP uh, experiment, which is called abrupt 127K which is the first 100 years of a last interglacial. Uh, and that's big, and we've motivated that by looking at Arctic summer sea ice loss because the response time scales in the, uh, or in that component of the climate system is very quick. And so uh, we can get to it within 100 years. Obviously the hope is that having got the modeling centers to set up their last integration and run it for a hundred years, that they'll keep running it for longer and make that into an actual last integration simulation. Uh, the, but without the time pressure of needing to get it all done before 
whenever the fast track deadlines are. So that side has been thinking about experiments. We as a PMIP community need to think about our experiments. And I guess we've, I'm not sure it's ever been said, but there has been a decision made that, that working groups are going to come up with experiments and that's going to be fine. And then there's going to be a little bit of coordination just to make sure that the, the experiments that the individual working groups have come up with uh, sit nicely together across the top. But the intention is that working groups are coming up with their own experiments. And you've seen, and there have been, uh, PMIP has, the 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 Pliocene, Pliomip has already come out with its protocol for its experiment. And I think that's been passed through peer review. Deep MIP for the Eocene has done one. And there's a meeting about uh, interglacials that's going to work out what the interglacial ones are. Uh, that's happening in January in Bremerhaven and Christian Stepanek is running that. There is a an equivalent, or I don't personally know what's happening within the, the LGM group, uh, but I'm expecting that there will be an LGM simulation coming out of the glacials group. And, uh, and then there's the the sort of the, the there's a working group led by uh, Miriam Codry and Chong Zhang that's coming up with the idea of sort of a replacement for the past two K simulation. And so there are so those so if you want to input on what simulations are being done and how they're being defined, then it's work within your smaller working group community to do that. And that doesn't and CMIT doesn't see that at all. The other decision that was made at some point uh was that was that we're going to cap we're going to catch up with uh cmip7 in our numberings and so we're going to skip a load of pmips and go straight from from uh, pmip4 right the way to pmip7 so that it can just be a pmip a cmip pmip thing uh rather than having this conf weird confected CMIP6 slash PMIP4 uh, thing. Uh, so that's that's sort of, I guess, a bit of a rambling PMIP update. The, the CMIP side of it has been thinking a lot more about, okay, well, experiments will be defined, how what data needs to be collected to make those experiments work. And last time for CMIP6, an awful lot of variables were defined as possible things you would want to submit and individual modeling groups submitted what they wanted and nobody submitted all of it and it all got a bit over the top. So the aim is to uh, to streamline things a bit more. And so there's a process that's started, it's called the data request process, where, where not only are are, is the total number of variables being slimmed down the to only 2,000 or something like that. You know, it's still quite a long list. Uh, but there's a more explicit intention to say, not just this is a variable that we would like, but why would a modelling centre want to output that variable? What use is it going to be made for? And so the, I've sent out... So we have had a few people, I've been involved with it, Christian Stepanek's put in a lot of work, but there's other PMIT people involved in various different portions of the of the creation of this data request uh, across various different, you know, there's various different, I can't remember what jargon is used, but ask team maybe, but they're groups of people. Uh, and, and so we have... Let me just share my spreadsheet because everybody loves to screen share of a spreadsheet. Uh, and, and so there is, there's sort of three different schemes of things at the moment or levels maybe. So what you're seeing here is, is this, is, I'll go to the cover sheet and the guidance first. So there are three different tiers that we as PMIP have been asked to respond to. And, and the jargon is an op there's opportunities, which are sort of the science reason behind needing particular variables. And 
and then those and then there's collections of variables so these are variable groups which allow you to do things and then there's individual variables and we've been asked to comment on on all of them uh what i really care about so actually let me step back a bit so christian with a little bit of help from me has put in a paleo climate opportunity and what we what we've said there is that that we want having done some paleo climate model runs we'd really like some data to be able to analyze them and to understand how the climate system is working and so i don't need any comments about that this you know that makes sense uh so what so but what we've been asked to do is to look at all the other opportunities and say which ones are important and so i've had a go at doing this as to saying for example here whatever this one is the agriculture and food systems impact i don't think having the data to be able to do that is that important for for pmip and so i've gone through and guessed whether things are a high priority and we really need them and so this one is the baseline data request which i think everybody is going to provide and that's the really standard thing so that's going to be high priority and then i've put in some other and i've guessed at priorities for others i would love some thoughts about whether those are right and and if i've got thing if i've said things say that are not relevant but actually they are relevant then please do send christian and and i an email about that and so i'd like some thoughts about i'd like some feedback about whether i've got these opportunity the priority of these opportunities in this blue column correct chris we'd like some feedback on what we've put into the various different for this paleo climate research uh opportunity we've decided some data and uh and and i'd like to check that we've got the correct variables so there's a column here called variables and so for example uh this atmosphere one has some key atmospheric variables uh that that we think are important i'm particularly interested in feedback about the isotopes pmip is the only group requesting isotopes these are there are these variables all seven of them are are were defined in cmip6 i don't know if anybody actually provided them but if we don't ask for them they're clearly not going to be provided uh but but i don't know about oxygen 17 and whether any modeling groups actually do oxygen 17 uh so please do give us some feedback about whether these variable whether these are right and then finally there are one or two variables that we that were not stamp not defined as standard uh and we've had to create a definition these are the ones that are highlighted in yellow here and if anybody has enough time to go through and check that we've got the precise definition of say the runoff flux the daily runoff flux then that would be wonderful if we could have some feedback on that so i'll stop sharing now uh please don't send your criticism of a particular variable to the whole of pima pronounce just send it to christian and i and i'll collate them and and give this back i think we've got a week and a half to reply back to this and if you don't have time to do it that's okay as well it's just i want to make sure that that oh i think we've done everything right so far but i'd love some confirmation from others uh, whether that's the case so i sent an email out about that with the spreadsheet and and so that bit of help and i'll happily take questions about not only the data request but other things as well if people have them but thanks for listening any questions to chris it 
doesn't look it, which I'm, which I'm assuming is that the, the spreadsheet is so exciting that everybody's gone off to delve into it uh, to, to have a look now. But yeah, um, thank you for listening to that. And thank you very much for a really nice presentation, Sam. Yeah. Um, thank you, Chris, it's, uh, for your very hard work and <laughs> explanation. Uh, Christian is the one who put in I know it's hours of defining variables and filling in filling in forms many times so yeah okay i will stop the official pimi wing seminar now but i will keep the zoom open so that if people want to talk discuss more with some presentation or other things they can freely discuss just raise your voice or uh, I, I will step in now, not about that, but I've remembered, and I should have mentioned it earlier, there is a, uh, the next PMIP Wings will be on November the 21st. I haven't sent out an email yet. Uh, and it's on a, it's, it's on West Coast early morning time in the US. So it's going to be evening for, uh, or yeah, evening for Europe, and I'm afraid, Matt, so you're you're just going to watch the video rather than waking up <laughs> at two a.m. To, to join it, I think. But uh, but it's going. We're going to try and work our way through the various different science priorities that CMIP have identified. CMIP seven have identified. There are four of them, and how they uh, could be addressed in in through the PMIP. And the first of those is going. And so the first of those is going to be about the pattern effect and how and how whether we're getting the sea surface temperature or biases in the sea surface temperature response and whether that leads to um, uh, to issues with climate sensitivity. And so we've got two speakers talking about that next month. Yeah. Thank you. Very exciting. So, uh, yeah. Thank you very much for joining. Um, Sam, you can maybe show up again and <laughs> we can, you know, if people want to talk a little bit more, I will keep the Zoom open. So please go ahead. And uh, if there's not, I will close after a while. And uh, yeah.